Kerbal Classroom. Welcome to class. Today's lesson is the gravity turn. All right, let's talk about getting into space. So, uh, Kerbin has an atmosphere that ends at 70 kilometers, which is nice and convenient because it's a nice and black and white, uh, well, in my case, uh, blue and black um, uh, cutoff. In Earth, you know, the atmosphere actually thins out, but it ke keeps going and gets thin and thinner and thinner. But, you know, the, the even um, really far away satellites uh, still can get a few molecules of, uh, of air hitting them. Um, but, it, but for, for our model in Kerbal Space Program, at 70 kilometers, there's no more air. Uh, the majority of the atmosphere, um, you know, is, is thicker at the, the lower parts, and so around 20 kilometers is a nice, um, kind of, uh, marker for a lot of people who play the game that, uh, the, let's look at the actual atmosphere on, on the wiki. Um, at zero, uh, sea level, the pressure is um, one atmosphere, and if we go up to 10,000 meters, we're down to a little bit less than 20% of the atmosphere, 17.7% of the atmosphere, and if we get all the way to uh, 20 kilometers, we're down to 2.5% of the, of the atmosphere. So if you get to, to 20 kilometers, you're already in a lot thinner of air, and at that point, it's, you know, it's still a nice... Uh, um, here, let's look at this uh, chart. You know, as as we go farther up in a nice, uh, I think it's logarithmic fashion, um, the the atmosphere, this uh, blue line, um, it cuts off pretty good. So here's uh, you know ten to the five. That's the the hundred thousand uh, in pascals or one hundred one kilopascals. Uh, anyway, so my point is that the atmosphere gets thinner the the higher you go up, and so when in our in one of the first episodes we did the Newton Cannon example where we shot straight up, and then once we were out of the atmosphere we circularized. That was just an example. That's actually a pretty horrible way of getting to space, and we're about to find out why. Okay, so imagine you're going through and um, you have kind of a a burn like this where as you go up you actually want to turn the ship towards the um, uh, the tangent line of the ellipse that you want so that by the time you're done burning you have an apoapse that's up here um, and let's put uh, um, so we have a nice apoapse of around uh, 75 to 100 kilometers once we get here, we do another burn and we circularize. And um, so there's two thing, two two terms I want you guys to learn. One is uh, a gravity turn, and the other is a pitch over maneuver. So when you're figuring out when to do uh, your when to change the pitch or to do your pitch over maneuver, um, you want to make sure that you're not going to um, let's pick a, I don't know this, oh, I don't know where brown is on this color wheel. There's kind of brownish. Um, let's just say there's a mountain right here. You know, you want to miss the mountain, so you need to make sure that whenever you, you start your turn, that you're going to fly over the mountains, and then right next to Kerbal uh, Space Center, uh, to the west is some mountain. So if you wanted to do a retrograde uh, orbit, then you know, you'd be going off this direction towards the mountains. But uh, to save um, fuel, most of the time we do a nice prograde orbit. Basically, as uh, Kerbin is turning in this direction, we want to maintain that momentum instead of fighting it and uh, launch in the direction that the planet is rotating. That way we save the uh, momentum that we have. The other thing is that as you go up and your orbit, um, your your prograde vector, 
the direction that your velocity is in. As your velocity vector, your velocity vector will change because as you're doing this move, gravity is going to be pulling you. That was a terrible um, arrow towards the center of curve. And let's see if I can figure this out. So as you're doing your gravity turn, you're going to have gravity pulling on you in this direction. Now that direction changes. And what that does is it changes the direction that your prograde vector is until you reach your apoapse, which case your prograde vector is tangent to that line. So here's, well, uh, here. So your apoapse, I guess your apoapse in this case would be more like right here or something like that. Um, as you're as you're doing your turn, your your uh, gravity is pulling on you, and they call this a gravity turn. So the most efficient way to burn is always in the prograde vector. And I was thinking about this a lot this week before I was trying to create this lesson, I'm trying to understand why that is. And you need to understand what a vector is real quick. So um, in the uh, the movie with Gru. Um, uh, he has an arch enemy named Vector, and a vector is a uh, mathematical symbol that is, de is um, denoted by an arrow, and it has both magnitude and direction. Is you know w what Vector is is famous for saying. Um, so you have a direction. Let's say it's to this direction, and you have a. Um, I can probably draw faster. You have a man. That's terrible. Let's let's switch to text. There, you have a, a magnitude of five. Well, if I wanted to um, to change the direction, then I have to. Let's say I want to go this direction. I have to add another um, arrow like this. Um, and these two arrows combined. Here, let's uh, let's redraw this. Let's say I want this to be my new magnitude or my new direction, and I still want it to have um, uh, a roughly the same magnitude. Uh, you know, if I if I add these two arrows, positive 5 in the x direction, minus, let's say, 3 in the uh, y direction, then I'm going to end up with this hypotenuse. Um, it's uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So that's 25, that's 9, that's a square root of 34. Uh, that's some, somewhere just under 6. So 5.9 or something like that. Roughly 5.9. Um, I don't know exactly. Uh, I have to pull out the calculator. Anyway, so uh, you can um, you can change your direction by by going in the opposite uh, or not the opposite the uh, perpendicular directions as your prograde vector. But you're um, you're not helping yourself go a whole lot faster uh, by doing that. Um, you're just uh, you're just changing your direction. Um, when you let gravity change your direction for you, and you continue to burn in the prograde vector, then you're constantly per you're increasing your uh, arrow. Um, in the most efficient way instead of fighting every time you turn you know if you're if you're going off prograde by too much then you're you're basically wasting a bunch of fuel just trying to turn well gravity is going to do this turn for you and then when you get to your peak you do a circularization burn um, but by the time you're here hopefully you know the uh, actual um, Uh, let me pick another color. How about yellow? 
let's say that the um the orbit that you you have by the time you reach apoapse because of this burn is something like this yellow burn uh, or yellow ellipse um, and then when you get to this point you just have to add just a little bit more delta V to pull this uh, out to here um, like that let's say that I wanted to get this payload into orbit I have a satellite with some solar panels some relay uh, antennas and some batteries and um, a xenon and dawn um, container for my role played um, station keeping. Uh, I've got a smaller engine at the top, a larger engine at the bottom, and some boosters because I really just want to show off getting to orbit and I don't want it to take forever so I want to get off the pad really fast. So this is pretty much an overkill ship and I'm going to demonstrate how um, so this yellow uh, marker that looks like this is the prograde vector and uh, as I get up um, I'm going to want to do a pitch over as soon as I run out of solid rocket fuel basically and I can jettison my uh, first stage safely now I'm picking up speed quite a bit so I'm going to actually turn down the throttle on my liquid booster and if I switch to orbit and stick to prograde like this you'll notice that I'm putting out very little thrust compared to what I could be putting out um, my app waps you can follow is this top number and um, I'm going I'm following my uh, uh, prograde vector and I want to I want to let gravity do the turning for me so I'm following my prograde vector as much as I can watching my app waps and when it hits about I'm going to say 100 kilometers. Uh, I'm going to cut off my engine. And that's when I'm going to do my circularization burn. Now I can time warp to above 70 kilometers. Add a maneuver to circularize. We can go ahead and point in that direction ahead of time, get rid of our fairing. Let's watch our blue orbit change into this orange orbit as we get close. It says we have an estimated burn of 54 seconds. If we look at our vessel, we can see that the current stage has about 54.3 seconds of burn in it, which means I timed this perfectly. We're halfway to the middle of our estimated burn, so we start it. Now our blue line is going to get bigger and bigger. and now we're in a nice circular orbit. For your homework, 
check out the page on the Kerbal Space Program wiki about gravity turns and also check out the atmospheric um, section in uh, the Kerbin page.